Greetings and good day. This is Donnie with TechWinner, and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, guys, I just wanted to give you an update on my journey into the battery backup world. Yes, UPSs. In a previous video, I added battery backup to all of my internet connectivity. I've got a lot of battery power devices between laptops, tablets, smartphones, but I also wanted to be able to power my desk. Yes, my work desk so that if there's a power outage in the middle of the workday, I'll still be able to keep going. So recently I invested in a APC Backups Pro 1500S. I'm gonna tell you why I went with this product and what it's actually doing to add value to the UPS that I already had. So without any further ado, let's dive in and let's take a look. So guys, in the video I did last year about adding battery backup to my internet connectivity, I made this comment. Now granted, I'll tell you right now, I live in an area of the country where we don't deal with a ton of power outages. I can count on one hand the number that I've had in this home that I've been living in now for two and a half years. It doesn't happen often, and it's usually very short when it does happen. Oh, 2022, Donnie, if I could go back and just warn you about what was coming the week of Christmas. Rolling blackouts in the city. So right now they're in a meeting discussing this very exact thing. And so essentially what this means is for a set amount of time, really this kind of varies by county and company, they could interrupt service for one area before they move to the next. So yeah, with some unprecedented cold that we had in our area, our power companies decided to do rolling blackouts. And on Christmas Eve, we enjoyed, enjoyed is not the right word, we experienced five different rolling blackouts, really no more than like 10 or 15 minutes, but my UPS totally did its job, lived up to what it was supposed to do, what it was designed to do, what we talked about on that last video of lasting two hours and 41 minutes, which is impressive, and it did its job. It kept the internet going for us while those rolling blackouts occurred. But guys, I felt a little more susceptible with some of the other technology that I have in my home. As I mentioned in that previous video, I do work from home. I'm on Zoom all day. I've got a desk with a display with a laptop. I would love to be able to keep those things powered along with a home lab that I've added as well to run things like Home Assistant and just other test virtual devices that I have. So I started looking into some of the different options that APC has out there and I landed on this model that you see here. Yes, this is the Backups 1500 Pro S. And I'll talk about specifically why I went with the S here in just a minute, but just looking at the aesthetics of this device, I really liked the look of it with the display on kind of an angle. It makes it a little easier to read if you're above the UPS, which most of the time that you are. And also I love that it has the two USB ports on the front of it. It's just nice to be able to plug something into the USB-A port or the USB-C port, depending on what device you might have, be able to charge it directly off of that UPS as well. Super handy in the event of an outage. From an expandability perspective, I like also that this has additional outlets on it versus the 1000 version I have of this that only has basically four plugs that you can use for the battery backup. This one actually has six. Again, super handy. From a capacity perspective as well, if we're looking at this in just pure wattage measurements, the other UPS that I installed last year has 600 watts capacity. This one has 900 watt capacity. So as I was going down the path of trying to decide priority with these devices, I knew the wireless internet devices that I have, I'm talking about that fiber ONT, that AT&T fiber modem, and then also my primary Google Wi-Fi puck are only drawing 16 watts of power. So as I was going down the path of just doing some research around prioritizing these devices, I knew that the internet specific devices like that fiber ONT, the fiber modem, the AT&T Google Wi-Fi access point really only draw between 14 and 16 watts at any given time, which on the 1000 UPS that I have, only draws about 2% capacity at any given time. So very low powered devices, meaning that I would like those to be able to stay online for as long as possible, especially with all the battery powered electronics that I have, I want them to continue to stay connected to the internet for as long as possible. For things like my laptop docking station, my monitor, that home lab, I'm not as worried about them lasting as long, but I would like them to at least as a goal, be able to last for about half an hour. So I came up with a crazy idea. And yes, I don't necessarily recommend that you try this at home. I'm just going to give you my test results from my experience. Manufacturers actually don't necessarily recommend doing what I'm going to tell you that I've tested here today, but I daisy chained one UPS to another. So from here on out in this video, the UPS 1500, the one with 900 watt capacity that I've actually put on my desk, I'm gonna call UPS one. 
The one that I had last year in the review video that is still trucking and doing very well for me, the UPS VA1000, the one that has a 600 watt capacity, I'm gonna start referring to as UPS2. So as I mentioned a minute ago, manufacturers don't recommend daisy chaining them together. For those who are not familiar with that term, essentially I'm taking UPS1 and I'm taking UPS2 and UPS1 is gonna be plugged into the wall UPS2 is going to be plugged into UPS1 and receive its power from it. So before you destroy me in the comments, there's a couple of circumstances where this could, in theory, work, and I really wanted to put this to the test. Number one, you want to have UPS1 be one that supports sine wave, which is basically the wavelengths that are coming from your outlet so that anything that it's passing through is still a pure sine wave. So UPS2 would still see essentially a signal that it's receiving AC power from the wall, even in a situation where it technically no longer is because the power is out. The other low risk for me is UPS2 is again, only drawing 14 to 16 watts at a given time, 2% capacity of this UPS, very low power. So guys, with those couple of things in mind, I installed the UPS1 up on my desk. I just like the aesthetics of it. I like having quick access to those USB ports. And I went on ahead and plugged UPS2 into the back of UPS one. So just looking at load usage, when I'm not using any of my desk, as far as the monitors, the docking station on my laptop, it's still saying it's got about a 62 minute capacity at any given time, which is great. Um, still supporting the home lab that I have running kind of in the background all the time, super handy for me. And it's also providing power to that UPS. So as it begins to drain, if the power is ever cut on UPS one, UPS two is still receiving power. So it's not running into any of that estimated time, which you're kind of seeing here on your screen right now. It usually fluctuates between 193 minutes to 202 minutes on the estimate on its display. So my goal in mind is if the power ever gets cut, UPS one goes to battery. It continues to power my desk, my home lab, and UPS2 for some set amount of time. And when it runs out, UPS2 essentially will then kick into battery and give me an extended experience for my Wi-Fi connectivity for some amount of time. So guys, I put this to the test and I can't wait to show you these results. Check it out. So as you can see here on the left side of your screen, UPS1 is now on battery backup. UPS2 actually does show online. I'll point that here for just a minute. But as you can see, as this time is going down, it's continuing to stay charged. We're at the 30 minute mark, it's still providing power. I will say the fan kicked in on this thing at about the eight minute mark. I went on ahead and shut down that home lab and extended it a couple of minutes. But as you can see here, 45 minutes, 37 seconds on UPS one. At this point, I've got it paused on that video for UPS two as well, because I want to point out it went from online showing that in that last frame to going to on battery. So it didn't actually kick into battery mode until UPS one was completely de depleted as I was intending for it to happen. So as you can see here, it's continuing to run. And on those previous tests that I did last year, it lasted two hours and 41 minutes. And guys, as you can see, as we approach that, we blew right by it. It continued to run down, continue to work. I was really hoping maybe we'd make it to the four hour mark, but as you can see, the clock hit zero. This thing still ran for four hours, four minutes, and 25 seconds. So guys, this completely exceeded my expectations and I'm absolutely thrilled with these results. Now I'm able to power my desk fully with a docking station running, a monitor running, my home lab for about 45 minutes and all of my internet connectivity for over four hours. And if I wanted to extend the capacity of UPS one, all I would need to do is shut down my monitor, shut down the docking station, shut down the home lab, and I could extend that time even further for UPS two. So again, sine wave is key here. I went with an upgraded model to get that. And just taking a look at that price on Amazon for this specific model right now, it is priced at 267. I'll put a link in the description if that's something you're interested in, but thoroughly impressed with what it's been able to do to extend capacity from UPS2 that I already had. So just adding that extra one in, huge amount of value for me. Absolutely thrilled with these results. And if you haven't already checked out that initial video I did last year when I was young and naive and not thinking about rolling blackouts, go ahead and check that out. Link in the description as well. And thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't already, I'd ask you to consider liking and subscribing and hitting that bell notification so that you're always staying up to date with new content as it's uploaded. But for now, I'm Donnie with TechWinner helping you make winning decisions when it comes to your tech. You guys.
Have a great day.